Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Amen. And His mercies endure forever. Let God people say the Lord is good and His mercies endure forever. Praise the Lord. Sister Deborah, hello. Hello, Sister Deborah. Can good, you, morning. good morning. Can you open the can you open us with a prayer, please? Can you pray for us for yes. God to bless the word we're about, about to receive today and let the Holy Spirit fill us so that the word we're about to receive will not be in vain. Will be a blessing to us and to all the hearers and the doers in Jesus' name. Amen. You name it, even Australia, whatever is going on around the world, the Lord protect those who are loyal to Him. If you are loyal to God, the Lord will protect you. That's a sure banker. But those who don't know God, they may think this world belongs to them. Allah, our Father is you of this world. He created it by Himself. And any man or woman who thinks he owns this world, is a deceiver of himself. I tell my children every day, I say, self-deception is a greater deception. You know, self-deception is to be doing something that you know is not right, thinking you are going to get away with it. But you cannot get away. Sooner or later, the seed you sow will grow. You will reap more than you sow, greater than you sow, much more later than you sow. So that's why we have to be very careful. So there are people who think this world belongs to us. We own this world. I laugh. Every now and then, you see me watching news. If you are with me, you see me laughing. Probably ask, Pastor, what is wrong with you? Why are you laughing? My wife asked me, why are you laughing? I say, I'm laughing because these people don't know what they are playing with. They are playing with fire. You can never escape the wrath of God if you are a sinner. But if you love the Lord, I don't care what is going on around the whole world. The Lord knows those who are his. There are people who are pretentious. Oh boy, I can go back to the 70s. Bishop can be any weakness. 
In those days, we were very enthusiastic for the things of God. We thought Jesus Christ was going to come tomorrow. We were laboring. We were involved in Christ, Christ, Christ ambassador. We were working, doing evangelism. We never look for money. We never do anything thinking we were going to get profit. We support the church of God. We give offering. We give tithe. I was telling uh, Sister Deborah yesterday when we were talking. I said, I pay my tithe so much that Reverend Emezi came to ask me. He said, Son, come, I want to talk to you. He said, Do you know what is tithe? I said, Yes, sir. This man was in his 70s. He said, You know what is tithe? I said, Yes. He said, What is tithe? I said, Tithe is 10% of your money. He said, You're not supposed to bring the whole of your money as a tithe to offering. I said, No, sir. He said, The money you are paying is too much tithe. Where do you get the money? What are you doing? That's when the church was truly church. He said, What do you do? I said, I know, sir. That's what I'm paying. That is my true tithe. He said, Really? He said, Where do you work? He had to come to my house, come to my office. That house, Bishop was the one that gave it to me. In those days in Lagos. So he came to visit me there. He looked at my house, sir. He came to my office. He was working number two airport through the Kenya. <coughs> Ma came to visit. When he came, he said, I'm looking for social person. Then they were calling me Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. He said, No, I'm Mrs. Pastor. He said, No, sir, Pastor. So to actually know what I was doing. But today, oh my, my, my heart is broken. My heart is sad. I'm not happy. People say why? I said, this is not how we started. In the beginning, it was not so. People are no more interested in the things of God. Everybody is seeking self. Everybody is seeking self profit. The, the word of God is not even being taught. But the Bible makes us understand <coughs> if you love the Lord, you that are godly, you are loyal. And in the 70, I see some young boys who thought they were smart. They will be stealing money from the offering. When the offering is there, they will put some money into the pocket. And they come to church, they were doing some money, evil thing. They thought they were very smart. They dress nice, they think they were very smart, but today they are all dead. And those who are not dead are very, very, very wretched. But those that serve the Lord, the Lord know the way through the wilderness. All we have to do is to follow. You can hear so many news around the whole world. The strong man thinks they are in power. There are so much ravages of crime, of drug, of terrorism, of hatred around the whole world. Christians are being killed in masses in Nigeria. All those people that want to burn church in our, our state, the Catholic Church in our state, they have, they have been arrested by the police. They say they were right there in the village, in the town. They didn't run away from there. But God knows how to reward every man. Brothers and sisters, your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. I say that every day. Your labor is not in vain. If you serve the Lord faithfully, if you serve the Lord faithfully, the Lord knows how to reward you. You want God to bless you, the Lord must surely reward you. Our labor is not in vain. If only in this world we have hope, we are for us men most miserable. I tell the young kids every day, I tell them, I say, you guys are missing out. Serve the Lord faithfully. Read your Bible as if your life depends on it, as if today is going to end today. I want to tell my children every day, I say, love the Lord, but it's very sad, very, very sad. That generation today, they don't have the love of God. It is very sad. But brothers and sisters, it's never too late. We're going to start from Psalm 29. Honor the Lord, you heavenly beings. Honor the Lord. For his glory and strength. Honor the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The glory of God thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is Majesty, the voice of the Lord split the mighty cedars. The Lord scattered the cedars of Lebanon. He makes the Lebanon mountain skip like a calf. He makes Mount Lebanon skip like a young white horse. The voice of the Lord strikes 
with bolt of lightning. The voice of the Lord makes the barren wilderness quake. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare. In his temple, everyone shouts glory. The Lord rules over the, wa the, the flood waters. The mighty rains are skins forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. May God bless the word in Jesus' name. You know, God has so many weapons. Weapons of war. You know, one of the weapons of war is lightning. This lightning is very, very powerful. The Lord has so many weapons. Any person that fear God, the Lord knows how to reward them. The Lord knows how to honor them. But if you don't fear God, I don't care the nation you are, you are going to be the bottom of the ladder. I tell people all the time, I always say it's not going to church. There are so many churches today that are not churches. One of our sisters lost the brother, we went to visit her. It was last week Sunday. When we went to visit her, she was talking about churches from the same place in Nigeria. From the same time, we're talking about the, the churches in Nigeria. He said, Pastor, a lot of these churches are not churches. He said, if you know what, they are, what is going on there, they are not churches. I was laughing. I said, I said, my sister, I am glad you can say it. If I say it as a pastor, people will say, why are you saying that? He said, they are not churches. He said, a lot of people go there, they are like happily place. They are like wish daughter's house. I said, but you know what they are doing? They are deceiving themselves. They are deceived and being deceived. He said, a lot of people go there. I said, they are deceiving themselves. The Lord knows how to fight. In Washington, D.C., near the White House, there was a thunder and there was a heavy lightning. It struck this husband and wife dead. And the third person was also struck. In Arkansas, there was a thunder. It struck the military jet and two military guys were killed. That is just little thing. God has so many tremendous weapons to fight. So those that don't know God, they take God for granted. They take they teach church is play. It's a place of game. That when I go outside, I tell people, I am a man of God. I may not behave like a man of God. I may not smell like a man of God. I may not dress like a man of God. If you don't take time, I can mess up your life by the power of God. So we're the children of God. You must know your authority of God. God has tremendous weapons. He can use to fight. You want God to bless you? Honor God. Live a holy life. Stay away from sin. I tell you, young kids, it's not where you started, it is where you end. If you share the love very well, you serve the love very well. Give God his due. Look for a good church to join or a good fellowship to join that teach the word of God verse by verse, line by line, chapter by chapter to understand the mind of God, to do the will of God. Because what you don't know, you cannot practice. What you don't know, you don't practice. But if you know the truth and you refuse to do it, you are your own. You are your own. Today we have so many baby churches. But we actually live among these people that go to these churches. You ask yourself, if these people truly know God, how come this whole church is full of single ladies? I don't have trouble against single ladies. They are still having children every day, dedicated children, but they don't have no husband. I said, why don't they get married? And some of these ladies have three or four different children from four different men. I said, that's prostitution. But well, somebody said, Pastor, don't say that one. I said, that is the gospel truth. We may, not say, we may not say what it is, it is what it is. You must honor the Lord. You must share the Lord. You must obey God. You must do God's will. Doing God's will is very easy, but sometimes it can be very hard because our nature, the human nature, wants the easy thing. May God help us in Jesus' name. The Lord knows those who are His. You want God to bless you? Put Him first. Honor Him. And when you honor the Lord, I don't care the nation you are. The Lord knows how to protect His own. He knows how to provide for His own. He knows how to do what is right for His own. As 
we just said in our prayer, this world is not our home. If this world was our home, then it would have been a terrible place. But the joy of everything is that we have a home in heaven. Because it was in Jesus' name. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescue me. I don't care what you are going through, the Lord will rescue you. You refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. That's why I say, honor the Lord, you godly one, and the Lord will protect you. Oh Lord my God, I cry to you for help, and you restore my head. I don't care what you are going through. When you actually call upon God, the Lord will come to your rescue. The Lord will come to your aid. You brought me up from the grave, oh Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. You know, Bible says, the Lord hate those who are evil up to the third and the fourth generation of them that hate him. But his favor lasts up to a thousand generations. So that's what he said here. God's anger is for a moment. God's anger is for a moment. I was talking to somebody just a few minutes ago in Nigeria. I told the person, I said, Satan was not created as Satan. Satan was never created as Satan. God never, God never created Satan. You know how Satan became Satan? Satan became a Satan through his self will. People today are evil through their self will. You want God to bless you, you must learn to honor God. If you honor God, the Lord will bless you. Not just for one generation. As I said before, if your father serves God, you come back and say, I'm not interested in my father's religion. The blessing is not extend to you. But if your father serves God, you move and serve the same God. That is second generation. Your grandchildren serve God. That is the third generation. Your great grandchildren, that is the fourth generation. Your great great grandchildren serve God. That's fifth generation, sixth generation, seventh generation, eighth generation, ninth generation, up to one thousand generation. The blessing of God will continue there. But if you say, Oh, I don't want to serve God, you are breaking the link. You are breaking the cycle. You are breaking the bond. That's why serving the Lord is very good. He said, But his favor lasts a lifetime. A lifetime is not 100 years meaning a thousand generations. Weeping may last the night, but joy comes in the morning. Whatever you are going through is temporary. Tough time don't last. Tough people do. When I was postponed, I said, nothing can stop me now. That is the favor, that is the deception of riches. You know, when you have, when you have money, so I am, I am powerful, I am this. No. Money doesn't know who you are. God is the one that gave you the money. That's why you have to honor God. Your favor, O oh Lord, make me as secure as a mountain. When you have God's favor, it's better than riches. Then you turn away from me, and I was shattered. See, this guy that was rich, he doesn't have the favor of God, doesn't have the blessing of God, everything is trash. Fearing God is very, very important. I don't know what you are going through today. I don't know what is going on. Fear God. I cry out to you, O oh Lord. I beg the Lord for mercy, saying, what will, what, will you, what will you gain if I die? If I sink into the grave, can my dust praise you? Can you tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. You have turned my money into joyful dancing. Now this guy say, God, I am sick. Heal me. I am not feeling well. Heal me. He said, if I die, what is benefit to you? But Heal me so that I can be able to wake up and sing your praises. When you wake up in the morning, do you sing God's praises? Do you worship Him? Do you say, God, thank you this morning for waking me up? You know, other people go to bed in the night, they didn't wake up. And I was talking to this person in Nigeria just now. I told this person, I said, God is the one that owns our life. Nobody owns your life. Don't be afraid. And the person I think is very powerful, the Lord is the one that owns that person's life. The person may not know that. The pain that I think is very, very powerful. The Lord owns his life. I was given an example. I said, there was a man in OPEC meeting. He's a Saudi Arabia man. He was giving a speech in this conference of oil conference. When the guy was giving a speech, everybody was laughing. He himself was laughing. And he was in the court. He was the one that was giving the lecture. The guy just fell backward. He just fell to the ground. Wow. And he died. Just there. Just like what happened to uh, 
uh, the guy that the worm eat. You know, the guy was, they were saying, this is the voice of God, not the voice of man. One of the angels said, no, no, you cannot, you cannot worship, you cannot worship, all glory belong to God. And, uh, uh, it, it, remind me, this guy, the worm eat him. So, in the Bible, and uh, after that one, the church had peace. This guy just died, right away he was giving speech. If, he, if somebody had told him, you are going to die in five minutes time, he would have said, oh no, I'm powerful, I'm rich, I control billions of dollars. The money we have is nothing. The car we have is nothing. The house we have is nothing. Our education is nothing. The greatest gift we have is the life God has given to us. This life is a gift from God. The question is, how do you take this life? How are you taking it? Do you actually worship God with your life? Do you honor God with your life? Do sometimes you might think I'm strong. I can do whatever I want to do. I can go to the street. I can play. I can stay all night. I can watch movie. I can go to a nightclub. But God is not in the equation. I look at them and laugh. I laugh. I say if only this person know age does not determine where you are going to die. Because you are old doesn't mean you are the one to die, first of all. When people see me, they say, old man. I say, son, I am an old man. I pray God will let you live, live to be my age. So, old age is a sign of God's blessing. If it be found in Christ, if it be found in worshiping God, all the old people are not a sign of blessing. But if you are found in Christ, your age is a blessing. But because you are young doesn't mean you will not die tomorrow. That's why you have to fear God. Fearing God is very, very important. But it's very sad that most people don't have the fear for God. How do you know you're going to have fear for God? What do you do when nobody is watching you? What do you do when nobody is watching you? What do you do when nobody is watching you? What do you do when nobody is watching you? That is what is called obedient or disobedient. So, when God is not watching you, when you are alone, when you think you have the power, how do you treat your fellow human being? How do you know when God is calling you? How do you know when God is talking to you? If you cannot listen to Him. You have taken away my clothing of mourning and clothed me with joy that I may sing praises to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I give you thanks forever. Giving thanks to God forever is very, very important. Do we thank God? You know, when things are tough, either because of the economic condition of the world, people refuse to thank God. I always tell people, tough times do not last. We all have passed through tough times. I don't want to tell about my life story, it's of no relevance. But we all have passed through tough times. But by the grace of God, when you put your confidence in God, you put your trust in God, you rely upon this God, whether it is bad, whether it is good, the Lord knows how to bring his people to a promised land. The promised land is that place where everything seems to be good for you. But if you, if you neglect God, well, you are on your own. As I say every day, when you serve the Lord, I don't care who you are. I tell my wife all the time, I say, the word of God is like a seed, a tiny little seed. If you put it on the ground, we have some fruit tree at our back here. They are becoming a bee tree right now. When we planted them, they are very tiny little seed. We actually buy them from, I think it was from a uh, loose. We bought them from loose. So we bought them, we plant them, we put them at the back here. We started putting water. When we were going to California one time, 2012, I told Brother Valentine, I said, please, the weather is very hot. Just like this year, it was very, very hot. I said, please, come and help me water them so that they will not die. So I gave him, I gave him a listen. I said, he come actually water them morning or evening. So he was watering them. And they are big tree now. And some of them are bearing fruits. Some of them are here bearing fruits. The other guy came to my house the other day. One of the guys that helped me to do some work around the compound. He said, Pastor, this is a very beautiful fruit. He said, you want it to be very bigger? I said, yes. He said, from Mexico. He said, the leaves are too many. The tree is too tall. Trim it. Make it shorter. See if it's shorter and cut off all these lots of 
lace and a lot of strength that is going everywhere. Just let it have about two or three just up there, not too tall. He said, You see the big, big fruit is going to bring. I, that would remind me of the Bible. I said, Wow, this guy is looking at the Bible. I was telling my wife, I said, The Bible says, The Lord prune you or discipline you so that you may produce more. He said, The tree that does not produce, the Lord will cut it off. But if you are producing, it will train you, it will prune you so that you will bring out more. That's the train it. So that you can be able to concentrate the energy in that few tree and bring out beautiful juices, beautiful fruits that are full of juices. He said, that's what you should do. I said, thank you very much. So now I'm waiting. When the winter is coming, the trees are falling off. But during the fall, I will trim all of them very well. I will make them shelter. There was a time they actually bring out fruit. They were very big. They were very big and juicy. But now there are so much leaves everywhere. I said, it's too much. That's what God does to us. When you are producing more, God, God wants you to produce more. God wants you to produce more. But when you don't have time for God, God says, well, you are your own. But if you cannot produce more, then God can take you away out of the sin. But may God help us in Jesus' name mm-hmm. to be a productive citizen of the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Chapter 32. Mm-hmm. Chapter 31. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me, for you do what is right. The greatest blessing you can have is God's protection. You know, the nation of Jews, I follow them a lot. I read about the Jews and I lead, I lead to their news. I study their history. The Jews, as a nation, whenever they have a serious trouble today, they still refer to the ark of God. And whenever they have a serious problem, you find them fasting and praying. And because of their fasting and prayer, God always saved them. You want God to save you, you must learn to turn to God. If you cannot turn to God in terms of your need, in terms of your difficulties, you are on your own. The psalmist say, Oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. The Lord is the only one that can protect you. I don't care where you are. You know, in Cincinnati, Ohio, because of what is going on with Donald Trump, this guy thinks he has all the ammo. He took a Arrow 45 or Arrow 15, this powerful machine gun that can pierce through the iron. He took the machine gun and went to the FBI's office. I said, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You can't do that. Martin Luther King said, don't even try to fight with the government. We don't have the power to fight with them. The guy went to the FBI's office in Cincinnati, Ohio. And as he went there, he was trying to preach into the FBI's office to kill them. But the FBI office is well protected. I happen to have talked to some of the FBI guys. I know whether they are all duty or off duty, they are highly protected. So you may see an FBI man wearing an ordinary t-shirt. He has a very powerful gun on his side all the time. So don't mess with them. So this guy tried to do it anyway. To keep the long story short, he thinking that the armor he has can protect him. The guy is in history. So the Lord said, protect me. Don't rely on your armor. Turn your ear to me. Rescue me quickly. Be my rock of protection. A fortress where I will be saved. You are my rock and my fortress. Don't depend on your guns. Don't depend on your weapon. They cannot help you. But I do not say if you have to protect yourself and having a gun, don't have, I don't subscribe to that. I am a type of person who said they have to be the biggest weapon you can have. During 9-11, I wrote to President George Bush. I told him, if you use a nuclear bomb, I do not feel sorry for anybody who allow you to use it. I do not feel sorry for them. It is what they want, it's what they desire. I say, sometimes you have to let a nation know that we can be able to defend ourselves. We don't need anybody to defend us. We have all the military power. America is a very powerful nation. If you think you are crazy, you want to mess with this country, they will mess with you heavily. So America is not in the Bible. There is a god secret weapon to defend the nation of Israel. So that's why Jehovah said, if you are not with us, 
you are against us. And everybody that is happening terrorists, he was talking to Pakistan. And the person, that person at that time knew what he was saying. He quickly said, no, 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 please, I'm for you. Otherwise, he was ready to use the nuclear bomb. So God has the biggest weapon. If you're not for God, you're against God. And if God is against you, you're your own. Nobody can save you. As a nation, as a family, as individual, we must learn to fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Honor Him. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. Pull me from the tribe my enemies set for me. For I find no protection. For I find protection in you alone. That is the gospel truth. We are in Christ. Christ is in God. We have triple protection. So for that reason, do not be afraid what man can do to you. Put all your confidence in God. When you do that, brothers and sisters, you are okay. I know the nation you are may not be saved. Even in this country, America, where we are, may not be saved. But God is our protector. They that carry guns shall die by gun. Put your confidence in God. Don't be crazy and not to want to fight with the U.S. government or with any government in your country. But rather, put your confidence in God. Because your God cannot save you. The Lord is the one that owns the battle. The battle belongs to God. When you put your confidence in God, you will win every time, all the time. Because the gun, they that carry gun can die by gun. But when you put your confidence in God, you'll be saved. I, I trust my spirit into your hand. Very, very important. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. I hate those who worship wordless idols. Don't do it. Don't use the name of church to worship, worship idol. I trust in the Lord. I'll be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love. For you have been my for you have seen my trouble. You care about the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to my enemies, but have set me in a safe place. That is very true. I don't care how dangerous or how dangerous your country or your city is, the Lord set edge of protection against you. The angel of God, they surround us. I have told us all the time how I pray. I release the angel of God to guard my house. And somebody actually told me he saw this huge, mighty angel guarding my house. That is the gospel truth. We have the angel of God. That's why the Lord protects those who truly love him, those who are godly. Love the Lord. Then you'll be fine. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Tear blood my eyes, my body, and so I'm withering away. I am dying from grief. My ears are shutting by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. I am scorned by all my enemies and despised by all despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. I am ignored as if I were a dead, as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. I have heard many rumors about me. I am surrounded by terror. My enemy conspired against me, plotted to take my life. Remember Job? All the people say, oh, look at that guy. But when you serve the Lord, you serve him faithfully. You don't have sins in your hand. People can say whatever they want about you, but you know who you are. That what I tell my children every day, I say, self-deception is a greater deception. You can deceive yourself. You know you can deceive yourself. But if you are honest, you know you are honest. Integrity is doing the right thing you are supposed to do when nobody is watching you. That's integrity. But those are people don't have true integrity. You want to be honest? First of all, be honest to yourself. When you're honest to yourself, anybody can see whatever they want. But when you have sin, we call it secret sin, they begin to waste away. They begin to eat you like a worm. If you put your trust in God, the Lord will never forsake you. The Lord will never leave you. The Lord will never abandon you. You want God to bless you? Put your confidence in God. And the God you come to serve, that God will reward you. Our God is not a man, neither the son of man, 
that should repent. They said, the soul that sinned shall die. A soul that sinned shall die. If you commit sin, don't think you are going to get free. You may not be caught today, but you'll be caught tomorrow. So nobody can hide from God. Nobody can run from God. But if you put your trust in God, remember Job, despite all that he went through, after the end, the Lord bless him. That is it. But when you have sin in your life, they can be very debilitating. They can eat you away like a like cacaworm. But I am trusting you, O oh Lord, saying, You are my God. My future is in your hands. That is the truth. Your future, my future is in your hands. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 says, Our day shall be 120 years. But you know what happened? It is not guaranteed unless they be found in righteousness. Your tomorrow is in God's hand. I always tell people, I say, God give us the princess and the principle on how to live a holy life. He said, Honor me with your substance. Your substance is your life. Don't overlabor yourself. If you overlabor yourself, he said, Stop from walking. Don't die before your time. Uh oh, somebody can die before their time. But I told you, see, our days, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, 120 years. Yes, but there are principles that will make it to you to do that. You know, I told you guys about Moriselos. Moriselos is a man that by 2 o'clock to 4, he must have his siesta and must sleep when he was alive. Then one day, we're having a crusade, people line up. He just, poured, he just took this big bottle of anointing oil, he just poured it on my head. He said, son, you go ahead and be, be ministering. I'm going to rest. What? I said, this man is going to rest? I just say in my heart, this man does not know God. I said, people are lying down. I didn't say that. I said, how can this man leave these people? When people are lying down for prayer. I didn't say that. I said, this, this, this white man. They, they, they. Then he turned around, he was leaving already. He turned around and said, He comes to the microphone. He said, Let me tell you, do not think because if you don't do the job, nobody else can do it. He said, The work of God will never stop. He said, Those who are doing it, he said, We are running, we are running a really. He said, Because I said, I'm going to rest. You think I don't know God? I said, What? What? What is this guy doing? Is he reading my mind? <laughs> you know, Jesus Christ will say, why are you trying to kill me? The Pharisees will say, Who is trying to kill you? He said, I know what you are plotting. The Spirit of God will speak through you. The Spirit of God know your mind. The Spirit of God know the, the secret you are planning. I went to visit somebody one day, he was telling me a story. And I was leaning to my and I said, That guy is lying. He doesn't know what he, he does not know. I know what he's telling me. I said, The guy is lying. I went to visit the guy another day. I told him to my brother. I'm a man of God. I may not look like a man of God though. But let me tell you something. The story you are telling me that day is not a true story. But why are you doing that to me? He said, Pastor, I'm sorry. This is actually the true story. He said, well, I don't like to tell people the true story. I said, but why, why, why were you trying to deceive me? God is in everywhere. God sees you. And the guy told me, so I said, well, this is the solution to your problem. But sometimes you tell people what they have to do. Oh, they don't have time. Fine, do whatever you want to do on your own. God is very close to us. When you do God's will, the Lord is more than able to bless you. But people think, oh, I put my one leg in the church. Oh, I'm a church member. You know, I was, I was, I was, I was covering with a Christ Apostolic Church. And the... I said, Pastor, I have to go and visit Paul at home. When I was a pastor, when I was pastor of a church. When I went to visit this guy, I see what he was doing. He said, Pastor, I'm not, a, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I just went to a church in case I want to do party. So that people can come and help me do party and they can contribute, contribute to me. Or if my mother died, they can give me some money. I said, what? That's why you come to a church? He said, yes. I said, so all these preachers and preachers, the guy is very nice. 
Being nice and not make you a Christian, they can, cannot save you. If the guy sees me today, he will bow down to me, man of God, Pastor. If you see me, this time, I want to pray for something. He says, Pastor, leave it, I'll pay for it for you. I said, No, don't worry. I can say, Pastor, don't worry. I'll pay for it. If you don't want everything, which one do you want to buy? I want to issue. Take that, I'll pay for it. But the question there is, that cannot save you. You want God to bless you? You must do God genuinely. I go, I see people's heart and be laughing and watching what they are doing. Even though I don't see you, I'm far away from you. But God is so God the Lord, God present is everywhere. You cannot hide from God. What? You cannot hide from God. You want God to bless you? Be close to God. Serve God. Worship the Lord. Obey God. Do God's will. The Lord knows those who are His. You may hide it from me. Oh yes, you may hide it from everybody. Oh yes, but you cannot hide it from God. Brothers and sisters, hide it from God. We cannot hide it from God. to God say, God, you know my sin. Just beat me. Beat me, God. I committed sin. Beat me. God said, I don't want to beat you. He said, God, I have sinned against you. You know me. That's what God like. Don't hide it from God. God already know what you are doing. Run to him and say, God, this is me. And David will call him man of God. So I say, what? How can David be a man of God? But I started looking at the principle what, why, why God loved David because David was never hiding any sin. He said, God, I did it. I'm the one. So when God to bless you, don't hide it. Rescue, do, rescue me from those who hurt me relatively. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your failing love, rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them be lying silent in the grave. Since they are lying lips, those proud and arrogant lips that accuses, accuses the godly. How great is the godly, godliness? How great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you? You lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the before the watching world. You hide them in the shelter of your presence. Save from those, save those who save from those who conspire against them. You you shatter them. You shatter them in your presence, far from accusing tongues. You know, as a pastor, people say a lot of things against you. But when you put your confidence in God, you will never miss the road. May God help us in Jesus' name. Put your trust and confidence in God. You will never be disappointed. Serve the Lord well. Love the Lord well. Honor the Lord well. The Lord knows the road to the wilderness. And he, all he has to do all we have to do is to follow, and the Lord will lead you to the promised land. May God help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, for He has shown me the wonders of His unfailing love. He kept me safe when my city was under attack. You know, there is so much attack today all over the whole world, but God knows how to save His soul. In panic, I cry out, I'm cut off from the Lord. But you heard my cry for mercy, and you answered my call for help. Lord, love the Lord, all you holy ones. For the Lord protects those who are loyal to Him. But He hastily, he hastily punishes the arrogant. So be strong and courageous. Or you put your hope in the Lord. So you put your hope in the Lord. Be strong, be courageous. Don't get discouraged. Don't get despair. The Lord is there and the Lord will protect you and protect all of us. Who put our trust and confidence in Him? The Lord does not need to win by multitude. If you serve the Lord well, blessing is yours. Don't run away from God. Don't try to hide from God. Don't try to think God does not see you. God sees every one of us. God sees even you. If you hide inside 
the bottom of the sea. You know, they are submarine. The submarine, you just see them when they, are, when they are moving in the water. But God is looking at them and laughing. And say, look at this. Look at this submarine. And you know, God can send thunderbolt to his submarine. Oh, I read about some of the military warfare. You know, you will know when the, when the, when the thunderbolt hit the water, it's like a big electric shock. It will kill even the most big animal because the whole water will become boiled. And anything that's around will just boil. If the submarine will disappear to the bottom of the sea. So God sees everything. God has so many weapons. That's why I have to tell God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, what joy for those whose oh, oh Lord, what joy for those whose obedience is for, whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose life whose life are lived in complete honesty. When you live in complete honesty, there's a blessing. When I refuse to confess my sin. My body wasted away. You see, sin it can be very, it can be very serious. I grow all day long, day and night. Your hand of discipline was steady on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. I don't know if you have tried. Put the bucket of water outside during this hot weather. When you come back, what of what of the water of this will become hot, will become boiling, like it's boiling. And during that boiling, there's a mist. And that's the evaporation. All the whole water will just disappear. When you come back and say, what? What happened to this water? Well, the, the, the sun has drunk the water. That's how one's life is. Who does not know God? Who does not serve God? They may think they are rich. Forget about riches. What is riches? What is money? Money is a piece of paper. It does not have no value. It's not for the exchange of what they call the economist medium exchange, the buying and selling of things. If it's not accepted, it's of no value. But when you serve the Lord, that's a blessing. Finally, I confess all my sin to you and stop trying to hide my guilt. <laughs> you see, try, try, to, try, try, to, try to hide your guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgive me. All my guilt is gone. So when you confess them, Say, God, I'm sorry. That's why confession is very, very important. You know what they are what we call deliberate sin. You confess, you repeat. I was telling my wife, I said, I have this my roommate when I was in Benzin. So this is my roommate, he will do all kinds of things. When it's time to, to want something from God, when things have become very hard, he come and put a candle, he'll be crying. Mother, my Mary, my mother, my mother, Mary, my mother, oh please God, Jesus Christ, you're my Lord, he'll be crying. Please. Mother Mary bless Jesus for me and God will answer his prayer. For some reason, God always answer his prayer. Then when, when he gets what he wants now, he will go back and get to the sin. I say, Ben, his name was Ben. I say, you are looking to yourself. Why are you doing this? He said, God, go one from here. Am I talking to you? Don't, don't disturb me. God, will you get away from here? You just, you just bend them up. Don't talk to me. So, there are people who do that. Whenever they want something, they come to God. When they get it, they think they are smart. You are already deceiving yourself. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time. There is a time for prayer, for confession. That they may not drown in the flood waters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protected me from trouble. You surrounded me with sons of victory. The Lord said, I will guide you along the best path for your life. The Lord knows how to take you to wherever you are going. I will advise you and I will watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or a mule that needs a beat and bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrow come to the wicked, but on failing love, surround those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All you who obey Him, shout for joy. All you whose heart are pure. Is your heart pure? It's, a, it's an individual question. 
I don't know. You can only answer for yourself. But if your heart is pure, don't worry what you are going through today. Don't worry what you are going through today. Tough time do not last. Tough people do. Those that put their trust in God will never disappoint them. You know, we told you about, about Job. Job was very, Job had so much trouble. Although Job was not because of sin, God was trying to say, I want to know if this guy truly loved me. At the end of the day, it was discovered that Job loved God, despite all the difficulties and the hardship and the degradation and the suffering. At the end of the day, the Lord reward him. The Lord may be trying you. Don't get discouraged. Talk time, do not last. I said it over and over and over again. If the Lord cannot bless you now, due to the time of human life, we will bless your children. That is your banker. Just be faithful to God. You serve God very well. Don't be discouraged. Don't be deceived. Don't be despaired. Whether I may be going to your country, it's election, it's election time all over the whole world right now. Election in Kenya, election, uh, uh, protest in Syria alone, election fever is growing in Nigeria, election fever is growing in the United States in, a, in less than 100 days' time, it will be mid time. There are so much to go around. Put your trust in the Lord. The price of things are going up. Inflation will be eating your money. Don't worry. Put your trust in the Lord. Tough time don't last. In a few months time, two people, when I was trying to turn off my electric, uh, electric light, I told the guy, I said, guess what? In a few months time, this, this light bill you guys are giving, it's going to be so low. The guy wants me to stand for five years. I said, well, five years is too much. Even in a year's time, before the end of this year, the electricity price will come down, gas price will come down, everything will come down. You see how do you know? I say, you just, you just believe what I'm telling you, you will see it. So, tough time don't last. Just relax. Just relax. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. If you haven't known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is time for you to repent. We say, Pastor, what are you talking about? How do I know Jesus? I go to church. Stop that. Don't even, don't even go there. Is that, is that asking you to go to church? I'm not asking you to go to church. I say, if you don't know Jesus Christ, okay, now, how do I know Jesus? Now we are talking. How you know Jesus is to confess your sin. Say, Jesus, you know the sin you have committed. Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Don't hide it. You know you, you already know what you are telling him. You know, like Joseph brothers. They were telling Joseph. They said, Joseph, this is what happened. And my father is here. This is what happened. Is that old man, is this here alive? You told us to bring this boy. If you keep this boy here, the old man will die. Who is that old man? That old man shall stand at our father. He said, really? He said, okay. Then when they were going, he said, Benjamin, you stole my car. I have to retain him. Then they were all crying, oh no, please. You cannot keep Benjamin. Joseph was trying then, if they still had that evil heart, they had to watch him. After testing, they found that they were not genuine. He said, okay. I'm Joseph, your brother. They said, eh? 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 You're Joseph? He said, I am Joseph. Come, come and kiss me. And my father said, like, I said, yeah. The father like, they went ahead and told the father, Joseph, the man said, oh, I'm going to see Joseph and die. Let me just go see Joseph. <laughs> he said, eh, 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 Joseph is alive. My son, I was dead. He said, yeah, he's alive. So God already knew your sin. Joseph already knew who they were, but they didn't know who Joseph was. God already knew everything about you. That's called repentance. If they were trying to hide from Joseph, they told him, we, we were 12 of us. One of, one of our brothers is dead. He said, oh, what happened to him? He said, animal tore him to pieces. Oh, they say animal turned to pieces. He said, yes. How did the animal get to turn him to pieces? He said, well, we were traveling together and on the way, animal caught him. And how many of you are like, now we're 11. What makes you 11? We are all one man's father. Our fathers are two. There is one boy, the last one. He said, so I said, well, all of you have to come for me to see. God already knows, just have already know what they were talking. He wants to know, have they actually repented? Have they changed? That's what God is looking for. I, I don't care what, whatever sin you do. God say confess. Just say, I'm sorry, God. You know me. You know me. It is me. I'm weak again. I have to commit this sin. I'm sorry, but I don't want you to come and commit this sin and become be repenting. God will not, God will not tolerate that. 
Repentance is complete repentance. You know what happened? Joseph said, I am your brother, Joseph. When you now confess, Jesus will come into your heart. Then you take your Bible and start reading. You can listen to this message every week, right? Because of the country you are, you know, able to have access to the internet and your telephone bill. You can read the Bible passages. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God can explain to you. Your life will never remain the same. Look for a church where they read the Bible, verse by verse, line by line, chapter by chapter. Join the church. Don't be a bench woman. Go and meet your pastor. Say, what can I do in this church? What can I do? This is the technology I can do. This is what I can do. Whatever you can do, you are working in your father's house. Do it and watch God. We we'll begin to bless you. May God help us in Jesus' name. Now, you can start reading your Bible. One day, you can you too can become a pastor. What? Oh no, God forbid, I don't want to be a pastor. Where? Well, God forbid that you should be a pastor. We need more pastors. So may God help us in Jesus' name. So brothers and sisters, we are stopping here today. I was including chapter 33 in the last minute when I read it over and over again. But next we continue with chapter 33. So we are reading Psalms. Very interesting, very challenging. This is life of so many people that wrote Psalms, especially David and other people. And it's telling us, you want to have joy, obey God. Confess your sin. <laughs> Don't try to be like ostrich. Now that I tell my kids. So when I'm doing study with my son, when he was a little boy, he would say one plus one, he said two. I say two plus two, he said four. I say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? One plus one is two. Two plus two, he said four. I said, can it be four? One plus one is two. I can't two plus two be four. He be to count one, two, three, four. He said, Dad, I don't know, I'm confused. I said, well, he said, what's the answer? I don't know. You have to tell me the answer. He said, Dad, the answer is four. I said, are you 100% sure? He said, yes. You sure that's the answer? I said, yes. I said, okay, let's look at the answer if it's correct. The answer is in the book. It will turn the page. That is four, but why do, you, why do you confuse me? I said, I'm not confusing you. When you go to the school, your teacher wants to confuse you. If you put out the answer, your teacher says it's not right, you challenge your teacher. And say, I know what I'm saying. I am correct. You have to put to be where I'm wrong. It actually happened. It did something. Teacher says wrong. He said, I'm correct. Teacher says, Let me look at it. He said, You are right. I'm sorry. Don't just take something. something. If you don't know Christ, somebody can lead you astray. I said, If you don't know, if you don't understand this concept very well, if you are doing an equation, 2s minus a plus an s equals to what? It's as. Because the A there does not have any correlation number. Like time. That's a test of algebra. It does not have any correlation to quote with. So you have to know your answer and do it very well. Nobody can deceive you. If somebody says, Jesus Christ is a white man religion, you say, you deceive yourself, you be a liar. I know Jesus for myself. Jesus spoke to me. That's called repentance. And when Jesus begins to talk to you, you will see what he begin to do for you. Don't believe these people. They are watching white man religion. You know, you know what you know, and you know that you know, you know, you know. Nobody can deceive you. That's what you try to do here. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So, we are going to pray today. We have so many challenges around the world, so many prayer requests. But we are going to pray. Say, God, here we are. We are your people. Called by your name. We are your people. Do not fail to hear us. If there is anyone who has sinned against you due to human frailty, the weakness of human body, forgive us. Have mercy upon us. There are challenges all over the whole world. Terrorists are almost taking over Nigeria. The election is, people who say the election may not hold. The terrorists are saying the election will not hold in Kaduna. Rufai, the governor of Kaduna, say terrorists are threatening to take over the country and they're already taking over part of the state. But we are going to pray. All these uh, court people, they are doing their own. They are not starting church. Tinubu wife, who is not church, who is their Muslim, they set up a church as a decoy.
to deceive people, but the Lord knows those who are His. Brothers and sisters, don't be discouraged. The Bible told us this is the beginning of the end of time. See, all this will come to pass. All this we are seeing right now. It will come to pass, but the end is not yet come. He said, but for the elect's sake, because of those of us who God have called, he said, those days of trouble will be shortened so that there will be faith on earth. He also want to say, when the Son of Man come, will, the, will he find faith on earth? Because things are going to be so high, everybody goes in where they are serving God. Brothers and sisters, don't let your faith be dissuaded. Don't let your faith die. Don't let anybody take your faith. Don't let anybody take it. The worship of God is individual. Serve God faithfully. Confess your sin. Live a holy life. God will start talking to you. That was what I taught my wife when I met her. I said, listen, God talk to me. God can talk to you. If God is not talking to you, you have no God. He said, what? How can God talk to you? I said, don't worry. You will hear the voice of God. Because it was in Jesus' name. I invite you. Hear God's voice. Do God's will. And God. God may not tell you to go and play lottery. But God may tell you, go and give somebody a call of go, go and give somebody water. Go and give somebody a half loaf of bread. Or go and give somebody one slice of bread. He begins to start with small little things. It's not good. You may not hear a complete voice. You have the urge to go and do something. That is God. The Holy Spirit urging you. After a while, you actually begin to talk to you. Somebody can be talking to you. You will hear another voice telling you what the person is saying is not true or is true. You begin to know the voice of God as you begin to go. May God help us in Jesus' name. Because everything we do in this world is spirit. This world is spirit. And nobody can hide from the spirit. We live in the spirit world. There are two worlds. The physical world and the spiritual world. The spiritual world controls the physical world. So when you begin to live in the spirit, brothers and sisters, you are living in a different new world. May God help us in Jesus' name. Go ahead. There are challenges all over the whole world. The whole world is in turmoil. There is so much trouble all over the whole world. Because of the COVID failures, the price is so high. England, I talk to them, people they are crying. The government is the the, the Boris Johnson government has fallen. By September 4th, a new prime minister will come in. Liz Brown or the other lady. They try to see which one is going to win the election. But the, uh, the, the question there is. Nigeria, there's so much confusion. America here, yeah. there is confusion now with Donald Trump and all his cohorts. And Ukraine, there's war. China are threatening Taiwan. 
and Japan, there is lots of trouble there. Uh, but, uh, this uh, guy in South America, Boris, jo Boris uh, Cerillos, whatever his name is, he tried to declare Masha Alini. And uh, in, 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 uh, in, in uh, <coughs> Australia, there is flood, there is fire, there is this in Europe, there is fire. Trouble all over the whole world. This is what the Bible told us. See, these are the beginnings of sorrow. But before that time, we'll be gone. This rapture will have taken place. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let Bishop pray for us. He God help us. We know it can be very depressing. One heart can start failing. But may our heart not fail. Because the Bible already warned us all this thing will come to pass. May God keep our heart with Him in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. No one can understand your power and your glory. It's so great and beyond our comprehension. I want to thank you this morning for another grace given us to hear your word. I want to thank you for my brother, your servant you have used, Lord, to speak to us. I want to thank you for his wife and his entire family. The grace you have given them to be able to organize this blessing that is reaching out to humanity all over the world. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We pray for the more grace to accept, more grace to advance, more grace to do more for you. More grace to keep on and more grace to carry on and to finish correctly and properly and truly. Yes, Lord. Lord, you told us in John 14 that let not our heart be troubled. You knew there was going to be time and season that could make man to be troubled. He said, if we believe in God, we also to believe in you. Father, we believe in you. Mm -hmm. We believe in your word, that your word will not fail concerning us. Mm -hmm. And because your word will not fail, we are confident that you will sustain us in this troubled time. Yes, Lord. To help us to know you more. To help us to talk to us after you. To help us to listen and to hear you when you speak and to obey you. Lord, I pray blessing upon every member in this uh, uh, church fellowship. This Bible study, Lord, every family, every family connected to us, Lord, all that have heard the voice and all that are hearing the voice online, Lord, wherever they may be, Father, we pray for your safekeeping. Amen. We pray for your protection. Amen. We pray for your enabling. Amen. We pray for strength and courage. We pray for wisdom and ability. We pray for your fear to increase in our hearts. Yes, Lord. That we will know you more. We will know you, Lord, we are secure. For you said you have kept us and hid us in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you because we are kept and preserved in Christ Jesus. Amen. And that is our safety and our security. Lord, we pray that we do not mess up our salvation. Lord, you have saved us because we are Christ and is given to us free. Help us to appreciate you every day of our life. Thank you, Holy Father, because you are faithful, God, and you are coming back again. Yes, Lord. For those that are ready, Father, keep us ready. Yes, Lord. The church is out for us for we go. Amen. We are the church. Yes, Lord. Keep us clean, keep us pure. Amen. Keep us holy. Amen. And Lord, when you come, we shall be confident in you. We find that we have commanded and committed us to do. Be loyal, Lord, unto you and be faithful unto you. Help us, Lord, to keep our estate. Father God, we thank you and to remain in our position of service and calling. And we are grateful. Be grateful, Lord. For all that you've done for us, our mouth cannot enumerate them. We pray that God will heal those that are sick and strengthen those that are weak. Yes, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you have met on our world and give the people, the leaders, the heart of repentance. Yes, Lord. And we will bring healing and bring joy and bring peace. Father God, we pray for your mercy that God will speak your word of healing, that the wind of healing will blow across the nations of the world to put an end to this epidemic. Yes, Lord. Lord, let us enjoy. Put an end to terrorism and to the wickedness in the heart of people. For you said the heart of man is desperately wicked, unless you, O oh Lord, as God has loved it. And the imagination of everything evil. 
but I said away the evil in the heart of men. Yes, Lord. That our imagination, our thoughts, our desire to be pure and holy and acceptable to you. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Your glory upon Nigeria, especially we pray. People are going through a lot of things they cannot even explain or imagine. Only you can give strength. Only yes, you can Lord. give grace. Yes, Lord. Lord, where there's war, we pray your peace, so we pray. Yes, Lord. And where there's trouble, we pray for settlement and Lord understanding. Yes, Lord. Where there's disaster, we pray for comfort and fear and affirmation. Father, Lord, we are in the world, we are not of the world. And so, Lord, keep us from the evil that is in the world. Yes, Lord. Keep us from the trouble and the problems that are that drive in the world. Yes, Lord. And keep us holy and safe. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're going to meet again next Saturday. We pray for divine coverage, divine protection, divine yes, provision, divine strength. The Lord will always have a testimony that it's up to the Lord is our God, and He has sent us always. Amen. Thank you, Father. We give you praise for hearing us and Amen. doing more than what you have asked today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I want to bless yes, you for, I want to bless you for Bishop and the family. Your words say the hand that water it will never go unblessed. Father, this uh, your servant has labored so much, he has fed so many people, he has touched many lives, he has planted so many churches, and he has trained so many men of God, uh, men and women of God. Father, bless him. Bless him, Lord, and cause his day to be sweet like honey. And bless the children. So that through through the, the God that they have served, the children come to know this God. And they too will serve him in Jesus' name. I just say thank you. I just bless your wife and let the children surround him like holy tree in Jesus' name. And give him more good health and more grace and more blessing in Jesus' name. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we find our God with man and also come in contact with in Jesus' name. God bless you all, brothers and sisters.